Okay, so today we'll find out if they get away safely from the gang that were trying to rob them. We burst through the doors, ran behind a waterbed and ducked. A split second later, the gang, the, the gang kids ran past outside. I think we lost them, Grover panted. A voice behind us boomed. Lost who? We all jumped. Standing behind us was a guy who looked like a raptor in a leisure suit. He was at least two metres tall with absolutely no hair. He had grey leathery skin, thick lidded eyes and a cold reptilian smile. He moved towards us slowly. I got the feeling he could move fast if he needed to. His suit might have come from the Lotus Casino. It belonged back in the 70s, big time. The shirt was silk paisley, unbuttoned halfway down his hairless chest. The lapels on his velvet jacket were as wide as landing strips. The silver chains around his neck, I couldn't even count them. I'm crusty, he said, with a tartar yellow smile. I resisted the urge to say, yes, you are. Sorry to barge in, I told him. We were just, um, browsing. You mean hiding from those no good kids, he grumbled. They hang around every night. I get a lot of people in here, thanks to them. Say, you want to look at a waterbed? I remember this chapter now when we read it in class. I remember what happened. I was about to say, no thanks, when he put a huge paw on my shoulder and steered me deeper into the showroom. There was every kind of waterbed you could imagine. Different kinds of wood, different patterns of sheets, queen size, king size, emperor of the universe size. This is my most popular model, Krusty spread his hands proudly over a bed covered in black satin sheets with built-in lava lamps on the headboard. The mattress vibrated so it looked like oil-flavoured jelly. Million hand massage, Krusty told us. Go on, try it out. Shoot a nap. I don't care. No business today anyway. Um, I said, I don't think so. Million hand massage, Grover cried and dived in. Oh, you guys, this is cool. Mmm, Krusty said, stroking his leathery chin. Almost, almost. Almost what? I asked. He looked at Annabeth. Do me a favour and try this one over here, honey. Might fit. Annabeth said, but what? He patted her reassuringly on the shoulder and led her down over to the Safari Deluxe model with teakwood lines carved into the frame and a leopard patterned bedsheet spread. Bed spread. When Annabeth didn't want to lie down, Krusty pushed her. Hey, she protested. Krusty snapped his fingers. Ergo! Ropes sprang from the sides of the bed, lashing around Annabeth, holding her to the mattress. Grover tried to get up, but ropes sprang from his black satin bed too and lashed around him. Not cool, he yelled, his voice vibrating from the million hand massage. Not cool at all. The giant looked down at Annabeth and turned towards me and grinned. Almost. Darn it. I tried to step away, but his hand shot out and clamped around the back of my neck. Whoa, kid, don't worry. We'll find you one in a sec. Let my friends go. Oh, sure I will, but I gotta make them fit first. What do you mean? All the beds are exactly six feet, see? Your friends are too short. Got to make them fit. Annabeth and Grover kept struggling. Can't stand imperfect measurements, Krusty muttered. Ergo! A new set of ropes leapt out from the top and bottom of the beds, wrapping around Grover and Annabeth's ankles, then under their armpits. The ropes started tightening, pulling my friends from both ends. Don't worry, Krusty told me. There are stretching jobs. These are stretching jobs. Maybe eight extra centimetres on their spines. They might even live. Now, why don't we find a bed that you like, huh? Percy! Grover yelled. My mind was racing. I knew I couldn't take on this giant water bed salesman alone. He would snap my neck before I even got my sword out. Your name's not really Krusty, is it? I asked. Legally, it's Procrustes, he admitted. The stretcher, I said. I remember the story. The giant who tried to kill Theseus with over-hospitality on his way to Athens. Yeah, the salesman said. But who can pronounce Procrustes? Out of business. Now, Crusty, anyone can say that. You're right. It's got a good ring to it. 
his eyes lit up. Do you think so? Oh, absolutely, I said. And the workmanship on these beds, fabulous. He grinned hugely, but his fingers didn't loosen on my neck. I tell my customers that every time. Nobody bothers to look at the workmanship. How many built-in lava lamp headboards have you seen? Not too many. That's right. Percy! Annabeth yelled. What are you doing? Don't mind her, I told Procrustes. She is impossible. The giant laughed. All my customers are. Never six feet exactly. So inconsiderate. And then they complain about the fitting. What do you do if they're longer than six feet? Oh, that happens all the time. It's a simple fix. He let go of my neck, but before I could react, he reached behind a nearby sales desk and brought out a huge double-bladed brass axe. He said, I just centre the subject as best I can and lop off whatever hangs over either end. Ah, I said, swallowing hard. Sensible. Percy's swallowing hard. How does that what clues does that give us about how he's feeling when um, Crusty's is talking, him, telling him about what he does when the person's too long for the bed? I'm glad to come across such an intelligent customer. The ropes were really stretching my friends now. Annabeth was turning pale. Grover made gurgling sounds like a strangled goose. So, Crusty, I said, trying to keep my voice light. I glanced at the sales tag on the Valentine-shaped honeymoon special. Is this one... Really have dynamic stabilizers to stop wave motion? Absolutely. Try it out. Yeah, maybe I will. But would it work even for a big guy like you? No waves at all? Guaranteed. No way. Why? Show me. He sat down eagerly on the bed, patted the mattress. No waves. See? I snapped my fingers. Ergo. Ropes lashed around Krusty and flattened him, flattened him against the mattress. Hey, he yelled. Send to him just right, I said. The ropes readjusted themselves at my command. Krusty's whole head stuck out the top. His feet stuck out the bottom. No, he said. Wait, this is just a demo. I uncapped Riptide. A few simple adjustments. I had no qualms about what I was about to do. If Krusty were a human, I couldn't hurt him anyway. If he was a monster, he deserved to turn into dust for a while. You drive a hard bargain, he told me. I'll give you 30% off on selected floor models. I think I'll start with the top. I raised my sword. No money down, no interest for six months. I swung the sword. Krusty stopped making offers. I cut the ropes off the on the other beds, Annabeth and Grover got to their feet, groaning and wincing and cursing me a lot. You look taller, I said. Very funny, Annabeth said. Be faster next time. I looked at the bulletin board behind Crusty's sales desk. There was an advertisement for Hermes Delivery Service and another for the all-new com Compendium of LA Area Monsters, the only monstrous yellow pages you'll ever need. Under that, a bright orange flyer for DOA Recording Studios offering commissions for hero souls. We're always looking for new talent. DOA's address was right underneath with a map. Come on, I told my friends. Oh, give us a minute, Grover complained. We were almost stretched to death. Then you're ready for the underworld, I said. It's only a block from here. So that's the end of that chapter. I wonder if they will finally find it. And the next chapter is called Annabeth Does Obedience School. Mm. See you tomorrow.